Roughly nine months ago, the Los Angeles Lakers found themselves on the outside looking in on a playoff race as a 10th seed heading to the trade deadline. And at the time, it appeared the worst kept secret in the league was that Rob Plink in the front office would have to give up a tremendous amount of assets to finally get off Russell Westbrook's contract. Well, fast forward to today, and the Lakers are coming off a deep postseason run where they ended up losing to the champions. An end to the season nobody saw coming for the Lakers, especially after a viral 0.3% odds Vegas gave the team of even making the playoffs that season. Compound out the fact the front office was able to masterfully swap out expendable role players such as Malik Beasley, Mo Bamba, Troy Brown Jr., and Dennis Schroeder for a far superior supporting cast highlighted by Christian Wood, Jackson Hayes, Torian Prince, Cam Reddish, and Gabe Vincent, it should go without saying that LeBron James and Anthony Davis led team still has a championship window presented right in front of them even 4 years after their first one. Even with all the positive momentum in favor of the Lakers returning to their winning ways heading into the upcoming season, with training camp being only a couple days away, there's still a bunch of questions left for the coaching staff and front office to answer, such as whether or not the team ultimately decides to bring on board a 15th roster signing in the form of a non-guaranteed deal to maintain flexibility like they've done in the past. What would be the optimal rotation for this extremely deep roster where egos won't get in the way of playing time while everyone gets a fair chance? And which of the many young Lakers on his team will be the next to make huge strides in their game? But before we get into drilling down on these questions, let me know down in the comment section below. Objectively, where do you see the Lakers finishing in the Western Conference standings in the upcoming season? Laker fans should know firsthand the West is extremely packed, arguably more packed than it was last season. So will we see the Lakers finally break their streak of being a play-in team and return to a place at the top of the Western Conference? If so, what seed? First, we'll kick it off the remaining 15th roster spot. In hopes of bigger and better options coming along post Damian Lillard and James Harden trade or even the upcoming bio market. While that may be the case, fans might be jumping the gun wishfully waiting for a team to release a productive physical bruiser at the center position to complete this revamped Lakers team, when in reality the Lakers should be focusing on addressing another glaring weakness that is surely to backfire on the Lakers in only a matter of time, that being the complete lack of elite backcourt defender. Here's the list of Laker guards heading to next season, D'Angelo Russell, Austin Reeves, Gabe Vincent, Cam Reddish, and Max Christie. Out of that group is probably Austin Reeves or second year player Max Christie, who would be seen as his team's best backcourt defender and that's not saying a lot, considering Max Christie has yet to even crack the Lakers rotation and Austin Reeves, although tenacious, is coming off a summer where he was constantly being exposed as the opposing team's target on defense. Granted the Lakers have Jared Vanderbilt, who is capable of hounding star guards of the likes of Stephen Curry, James Harden, and Damian Lillard, but do the Lakers really want to put all their eggs into one basket for a supposedly defense first head coach? Keep in mind every single title contender has multiple stars on their roster, and Jared Vanderbilt's just one guy. This is all to say the Lakers already have 3 athletic big men to throw at Nicole Jokic between Anthony Davis, Jackson Hayes, and Christian Wood as opposed to the lone option of just Anthony Davis last season, which is certainly an upgrade. But fans might be too fixated on how to utilize all their resources in hopes of stopping Nikola Jokic, and not paying enough attention into how to stop Jamal Murray, who put arguably an equally dominant display, when he torched the Lakers backcourt in a quick sweep of a series. That's where it might be wise for the Lakers front office to bring on board a familiar face in Stanley Johnson in the form of a non-guaranteed deal. Johnson's cut from the exact same cloth of the type of player that Darvin Ham loves to work with, that gritty blue collar, physical, willing to do the dirty work mentality, that had Darvin Ham obsessed with finding minutes for Patrick Beverly and Dennis Schroeder, at times even playing them together at the same time to many fans' dismay. The beauty of signing Stanley Johnson would be the fact that he's in no position to demand regular rotational minutes, he's a situational defensive specialist and he's made significant improvements on his greatest weakness, that being his long-range shooting ability. Last year for the San Antonio Spurs, Johnson shot 45% from beyond the arc, and it's safe to say his teammates didn't do him many favors setting him up for success, as it was quickly clear as day the organization had no interest in winning, but instead taking for Victor Wimanyama, which they would ultimately accomplish. Johnson's now conservative, average 3-point shooting ability wouldn't even be why he'd make a worthwhile signing. But rather, Laker fans have witnessed firsthand that not only is Stanley Johnson capable of disrupting superstar guards of the likes of a James Harden, Stephen Curry, and Damian Lillard, but he's actually wired to relish the opportunity to throw these big name stars off their games and not even give an inch of breathing space when he's on the floor. What is there to lose having a guy like that in your corner, especially since it'd be an extremely tough sell for the Lakers to convince a serviceable free agent center to join their already crowded front court? 
Again, the Lakers now have bodies to throw at Nikola Jokic, but the same can't be said about Jamal Murray, who if anything, is bound to even further dominate the Lakers now that they don't have a defensive pest like Dennis Schroeder on the roster. That's the end of the long-winded Stanley Johnson campaign segment, and now it's time to highlight some of the other underrated storylines that fans should pay attention to during training camp and to kick off the season. We've touched upon Max Christie's opportunity to crack the rotation, with Cam Reddish probably being the biggest obstacle, but objectively, Christie has far more than a puncher's chance at coming out ahead of the 24-year-old former lottery pick with star potential. As mentioned, Darvin Ham still very much lacking his backcourt defensive specialist, and from a natural defensive motor standpoint, Cam Reddish has nothing on Max Christie in that department. Same dynamic could be said about projected starting point guard DeAndre Russell and new backup point guard Gabe Vincent. Both have their limitations on defense, one handicapped by lack of length, the other handicapped by lack of strength and physicality. If the postseason were to start tomorrow, it would legitimately be a coin toss as to which point guard Darvin Ham would trust with more minutes. DeAndre Russell's talent speaks for itself. After all, he made an all-star team at only 22 years old and now at 26, it would be safe to assume his best is still very much ahead of him. But at the same time, this is the third straight postseason where DeAndre Russell's production has absolutely plummeted to the point where he's become a fraction of the player he is during the regular season with occasional hot bursts here and there. This is not to say the Lakers aren't extremely fortunate to have DeAndre Russell back in the purple and gold as he immediately provided a breath of fresh air upon his arrival in place of Russell Westbrook. The point is to highlight the reality that heading to the upcoming season, DeAndre Russell might unfairly find himself with a shorter leash if Laker fans were to take a look at the lay of the land. Gabe Vincent, his backup point guard, is the hard-nosed, gritty player Darvin Ham loves to see on the court. DeAndre Russell is on an extremely trade-friendly deal on a Lakers team with a plethora of assets, and any concern for DeAndre Russell not being ready for the physicality of the postseason once again, the front office would definitely look to flip him in exchange for a more win-now piece under a 39-year-old LeBron James' closing championship window. But let me know down in the comment section below what are your thoughts on some of the questions that were brought up in this video. Where do you predict the Los Angeles Lakers will finish in the Western Conference in the upcoming season? Should the front office maximize on their 15th roster spot to sign Stanley Johnson as their missing lockdown backcourt defender? Is Max Christie ready to break the Lakers rotation? And do you predict DeAndre Russell will be used as a trade ship come the upcoming trade deadline? But that's it for the video, take it easy guys.